Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel my name is gonzi and today we are going to be reacting to a lindsay nicole video man this time called junk spiracies megalodon is not still alive so without further ado let's react this thing man let's go in the last few years you might have seen any one of these videos about the megalodon still being alive evidence True. of sightings evidence. threads about how they're probably somehow living somewhere in the mariana trench this is all complete garbage and actually inspired me to start a new series this is episode one. So, Let's welcome go. to Junk Spiracies, where we tackle animal conspiracies that Drink are all based water, on by the way. Junk. Keep yourself Despite hydrated, being big man. constantly, beaten to a pulp, some might say. This conspiracy is still very much alive and well. Videos on YouTube of like, top 10 videos proving the Megalodon's still alive. I get tagged in stuff on TikTok that's like, scientists proving that Megalodon is still alive. Constantly. And while I've debunked them multiple times on TikTok, I decided it was time to do it in an expanded format. So... Buckle up. I'm going to break down all the reasons why this conspiracy came to be and all the reasons it is absolutely false. Okay. At some points, I'll probably get a little bit pissed off because nothing pisses me off more than a bunch of should. junk. So once again, my name is Lindsay Nicole and this is Junk Spiracies. The Megalodon is Lindsay. still alive. Let's well, get my the general is information so dead, out of the way. If for some reason shrimp. you've never heard of the Megalodon or know very little about it, I envy you. But today that will end. I'm going to give you the neutral facts as an overview so we all know what the fuck is going on as we move forward. Megalodon was a massive predatory shark that existed he from was 23 huge. to 3.6 million years ago. Maybe until 2.5 million years ago, but still, millions of years ago nonetheless. They're the largest predatory fish to ever exist that we know of, and might have had the strongest bite Look force of that. any animal alive that, ever. That know it, makes no sense. With max estimates putting it at like 40,000 no pounds sense, per sense, square inch. Bro. Compared to our puny 120 pounds per Jesus. square inch, that is still powerful enough to bite off a pinky finger. 40,000, dude, they were not fucking around. That is fucked up. Most of the fossilized remains we found that. them are teeth. That's the deal with sharks, as we've talked about a couple times on this channel. Yeah, but there are some really well-preserved skeletal elements as well. They have no bones. Jaw fragments. Their teeth have been found so in most ocean that basins and on every continent. Except in Antarctica, teeth. and in some cases have been found embedded in the fossils of their prehistoric prey, yep. whales and seals. So clearly they were tearing shit up globally for like 20 million years. And how about their size? I haven't told you how big they were yet. In the last video I did on the Megalodon, I went a little more in depth on what they had going on and how scientists figure out how big they were using their teeth. If you want to learn more about that, check it out here. And also to learn Already about on their the channel, by the way. And I that video, predator, I reacted to that. Whale. Anyway, their max size estimates historically were like 80 to 90 Damn. feet. Those turned out to be way too big. So now they range between like 30 to 65 oh, okay. feet which is likely Damn. the kind of size variation that existed anyway between individuals so the megalodon was a big shark also their scientific name is otitis megalodon so their common name comes from their species name megalodon you can either call them megalodon or the megalodon i want to make okay. it clear that when i Meg. say the megalodon i'm talking about a whole species and not just one fucking shark that some people think still exists in the Mariana Trench, a single shark that's been alive for like 3 million years. Anyway, in order to reach this level of supremacy, they evolved over the years as highly active predators. They're estimated to have been able to reach burst speeds of 23 miles Damn. per hour, were partially endothermic, i.e. produce their own body heat, i.e. were warm-blooded, which means they had an appetite, like nobody's business. And so they must have perused the more shallow coastal waters, where the vast majority of marine life exists today, in okay. order to maintain their diet. I need you to remember all of this. Because as we go through some of these conspiracy ideas, I want us to be able to have shared moments of this idea is junk. These sharks were fucking bulldozers in the oceans. And the idea that they could somehow still be alive in an elusive mysterious fashion today 2024 is fucking insane so it is insane it all begin? although it would be pretty fucking cool society it is insane strength. buckle it up is. because sadly is it nuts. is megalodon has normally been the, since the like correct answer is a boring that, answer actually and quick sidebar before plate tectonics alive? were like oh, known as a thing people would find boring, shark teeth on hillsides or wherever That's like away works, from man. the ocean and they weren't registered as shark teeth because they were so far from the ocean they thought these teeth kind of resembled human tongues so they were known as tongue stones or the devil's tongue. And they would be placed in a village overnight and then in the morning it would be like, oh my God, a devil's tongue. And it was seen as a bad omen or like somebody had done something wrong and it would just cause all this drama, like a witch hunt. And then okay. years went on and eventually some people were like, those kind of look like shark's teeth. And then others were like, that's insane. Until eventually a Swiss naturalist by the name of Nikolaus Steno brought Shout proof out of Nicholas, them in the form man. of a shark's mouth and said, tongue stones. 
and boom, tongue stones debunked. And megalodon teeth were included in those tongue stones. So that's cool. That's one of my favorite things I learned in my paleontology class. So thought I'd tell you. Anyway, megalodon had been Lindsay's tattoos, by the way. And some of Dang. the fossilized teeth were even collected on the HMS Challenger back in 1875. Love those tattoos. Remember man. that trip that also found out the Mariana Trench is deep as fuck? Very big trip for humanity. But these teeth would also turn out to be a big deal and provide the first junk evidence for the continued existence of the megalodon. In 1959, a known cryptozoologist by the name Vladimir Chernetsky dated Chernetsky. the teeth using a method that Ooh. scientists quickly pointed out was all sorts of messed up. I don't want to go into it because there's a lot more I want to cover in this video other than the teeth. But if you want to read more on why the technique was messed up, check out this paper. This okay. paper also provided a lot of other great information for this video. So anyway, the fucked up dating technique led to Chernetsky, Chernetsky, to the conclusion that one of the teeth was 24,267 years old and the other was 11,333 years old. He was off that by millions early. of years. Well, I've done all I can do. Even though multiple scientists disproved this technique later on, the damage had been done. And oh, this yeah. was the first real start to the conspiracy that the Megalodon is still alive. Dude, and I see people using these exact teeth as evidence to this day. Like, as if they to were discovered day. yesterday. It's insane. But the biggest culprits of this conspiracy have been the sightings. And this is probably the side you're more familiar with as well. Despite the existence of whale sharks and basking sharks, you know, the other yeah, large large chill sharks alive today. Yeah. Any apparent sighting of a large shark bigger than your average gray white tends to get classified as hard megalodon evidence by your average clickbait conspiracy theorist. And this phenomenon can be traced all the way back to 1963, a book called Sharks and Rays of the Australian Seas by marine biologist David Steed. Is it Steed okay. or Stead? Stead. Yes, Stead. marine biologist. That makes and you sense. bet your ass this story comes up on every proof video on YouTube because of that. I actually watched one of those top 10 fucking stupid videos videos on YouTube just to get my footing and this is the first story that came up as like number one okay. proof. So now my entire feed is conspiracy videos. So the series is going to be thick if you want it to be. Let me know. Let me know if you want more conspiracy videos. Yes. But anyway, David reads this story in his book that he heard back in 1918 on an island off the coast of Australia. The story came from some fishermen who had a boat and some three and a half foot wide lobster pots that could each hold a few dozen lobsters. Big pots, lots of lobster. As the story goes, they had just encountered a massive white shark not a great white but a white shark white colored shark one fisherman said the shark was 115 fucking feet long. hell the other said it was 300 feet long Yo. just to recap there has Damn. never been an animal in the history of anything ever to be 300 feet long that we know of not even close they said over the course of a few days the shark would repeatedly come back ate the lobster pots whole and also took a bite out of the boat and david the marine biologist said hey their sizes are a bit off but the rest of it I believe it. Sounds like evidence that the hmm. megalodon is still alive. And a I'm a marine biologist. I put that in my would book. Swallow the close. boat whole. Well, luckily, that paper I mentioned that talks about the tea stuff also talks about this sighting. The author, by the way, is paleontologist Tyler Greenfield, and he found some interesting stuff. But let's cover the basic shit first. Like I said, the sizes are nuts. The biggest yeah, whale nuts. ever recorded was 115 feet long. That's the size whale of a blue whale. Today, you get to like 60 feet long. But even if for some reason they exaggerated a whale shark size, the description and the behaviors don't match up. Great white. Well, sharks sharks potentially whites. display behaviors like that, but they've only been recorded at max 23 feet long. They're also in the That's area. That's huge, so they would be by the way. Familiar with a a great seven white shark, meter so long shark. Would have said it's That's a great white. None of it adds up. But turns out there was also a newspaper article written about this sighting that Tyler mentioned in his paper. The article was written on January 30th, 1918, in the Sydney Evening News. In that same newspaper was a different article about a huge monsoon that had just affected the same area. Strong winds, okay. flooding classic monsoon shit is definitely powerful enough to damage some fishing equipment. But those damages could easily be seen as more avoidable or due to improper storage, putting the fault on the fishermen for the damages to the boat by some theoretical higher up of their fishing company. So with mm. the storm in mind, what seems more likely? A record-breaking giant albino great white damaging the same boat over the course of a few days or that the story was made up to avoid paying for the damaged equipment that the storm fucked up because you didn't store it properly hard to say I know. Let me know what you think in the comments. It sucks that David was a marine biologist because it gave this story in his book immediate credibility. And that is what sucks about conspiracy theories. People can find one person, like one yeah, doctor true. or one scientist, who has an insane idea that goes against everything everyone else in their field knows to be true. And people will latch on to that one person because of the title they have. And like, yes, science is all about looking into crazy ideas. But a scientist with crazy ideas is not always right just because they're a scientist. And that is why the peer review process 
exists so other scientists can analyze those ideas and figure out if there's any basis to them. Stop mm -hmm. finding one person with credentials. Hey, she's spitting, man. She's spitting bars. If everything they're saying is going against what everyone else in their field knows to be true. It's fucking crazy. But anyway, let's move on. Because while that initial hypothesis has definitely added fuel to the fire, it seems a lot more reasonable to blame modern mainstream media for what this conspiracy exists as today. There's no doubt that fictional stories influence what people think is actually real. Like, True. dude, Ice Age was definitely telling us something. There are definitely dinosaurs living in the center of the earth and the government is hiding it from us. Thank God Ice Age is telling us the truth. And that definitely happened. That would be so like cool Jaws, as well. The that's really on the nose, the Met. Yes, the two and a half star movie is telling us something the government doesn't want us to know. Don't clip that. But what I'm actually much more disappointed in and would imagine bro, it would be so cool if dinosaurs were roaming around, ago, bro, still. Fake documentary it would be so cool. Using photoshopped pictures, still happening, CGI videos, but, you know. and actors hired to play the roles as scientists to claim that the Megalodon is still alive and it was aired on Discovery Channel. There's a really good chance you've seen it. At the time in 2013, it was like their most watched Shark Week segment ever. It's called Megalodon, the monster shark lives. And it looks like every other documentary you'd watch on Discovery, except for a two second disclaimer at the end of the movie that doesn't really take any direct accountability for any of it being fake. I actually bought it on YouTube. It was like three bucks just for context because I never saw it when it first aired. But the disclaimer wasn't on the YouTube version at all. They said they okay. dramatized things to explore the legend, but what the fuck does that mean? Nothing really. That's so... Despite being berated by fuck? thousands of people from multiple angles, Discovery doubled down and came out with a part two like the next year titled Megalodon the new evidence, which was definitely the right decision for them to make. And I don't know at what point this happened because I could only find screen grabs of it, but at some point they put out a poll on their website to their Megalodon viewers asking if they think the Megalodon is still alive and 70% said yes. Dang. 70% dude. I just can't believe they did that. Honestly, it's just insane. Like you claim to be a reliable science network and then you pull Bex. shit like that. I don't know. I just feel like if you're going to claim to be a reliable network, you should probably commit to that. I know I'm kind of ranting, but I think the main problem that away, girl. Here is that we view thing. channels like Discovery as a collection of scientists or people in science because that's what their programming is about. But at the end of the day, people running Discovery are not scientists or people True. in science. They're not the people in your favorite Discovery show. They're people in entertainment. And people in entertainment generally don't give a shit about what's true or not. They care about what's entertaining. Part of me kind of feels bad for saying this, like maybe I'm being too harsh, but you know what? No, they had a nerve are. to make a sequel. Discovery, you have some fucking nerve. You deliberately misinformed millions yep. of people and it's then true. doubled down. She's shame, spitting. Shame, shame, shame. She's spitting, like I said, man. I bought it's it because I had a sneaking suspicion It's like that the History Channel. Proof videos that shit of them reporting history that or making Sorry, docs about history so, shit. It's long past. past. Through it, and they what do, do you know? entertaining stuff. Was correct. So before they do, I show you some but of the like, viral clips, look at ancient aliens, bro. Your guy, mum's an alien to those idiots. Colin Drake, so, the star of the show, as you would suspect. He is not a marine biologist, but an actor from South Africa named Darren Meyer, who has a decently sized portfolio on IMDb. He got cast to play a role in a film, as actors do. Nothing wrong with that, but I want you to burn this image of him in your brain, so that next time you see new Megalodon proof, and he shows up, you can know. It's a bunch of junk mm -hmm. in the factual sense. I'm gonna play a few clips from the movie and let me know if they look familiar to you. The video was shot by a father and a son who had come across a whale. Blue whale sort of bitten blue in blue. half. Now the original footage was kind of hard to make out. But oh my after God, bro. It, that is so fake. It's actually insane. And guess what? If you see a blue whale with the missing half, she exploded or was eaten by sharks. Normal sharks. That would be able to bite the of a Damn, bro. Size, Bunch of who? What's the new evidence now? A satellite photo near Sao Paulo. Well, during the initial investigation, the agent who was studying the swarm oh, I've uh, seen noticed this. something out in the water. I've seen this one. Okay, kind of a speck. Yeah, well, it, yeah, at this resolution, it's a speck. When they zoomed in, though, they got this. Yeah, it's a little fuzzy, but I'd say that's a shark. Those are 40-foot buses, and when you compare them next to the first photo, I'd say that's a 70-foot shark. I saw some shark go by that, that didn't quite fit in. What did you make of this thing? Well, at first I, I thought it was a great white with <sighs> some kind of skin condition or... Drake, did you have the same initial assessment? What was yours? Well, it certainly is the size hmm. of a great white, but there's more going on than just the skin. Take a closer look at its back. You can see bumps along its spine. Right there on both sides, right? Yeah, that's more than just an abnormality. That's a, a genetic structural difference in its cartilage, which suggests a much sturdier animal. 
So in your estimation, this is not a great white. No, the shark in Australia is not an adult great white. It's a baby megalodon. Those a videos baby megalodon. have 92 Damn. million views combined Yo. on TikTok. And that's just from one oh repost of it. Oh my god. Each. They've been reposted so many times. And from the quick scroll I did in the comments, no one is aware of the fact that these came from a documentary Discovery aired that turned out to be fucking fake. No one is aware of the fact that they came from the worst decision Discovery ever made. I mean, why would they? Probably half the people who watched that TikTok weren't even sentient when it came out. So now it can make its rounds again in short form format. Of course, there's other forms of video evidence that make their rounds outside of the CGI from that movie. They're usually cases of mistaken identity. Like this video that's been circulating since 2021. A, a giant shark, shark spotted from a ship off the coast of Massachusetts. This is a basking shark, yep. a giant shark alive today that is not the Megalodon. I'm gonna take a swift guess and say that every video you see of a giant shark that people think is the megalodon is just a video of a basking shark. They so are what huge. They is are a basking huge. shark? The basking shark is the second largest fish alive today that we know of, right after the beloved whale shark. Their scientific name is Cedarhinus maximus, which translates Cedarhinus maximus. Sea monster, maximus. Understandable, I must say. Like whale sharks, basking sharks are generally slow moving filter feeders. I say generally because they tend to move at like two miles an hour, but then also on rare occasion, they do shit like this. Whoa, that is cool. That is so yeah, cool. Yeah, dude, I did not know basking sharks breached until I started researching Damn, for this bro. video. Damn, bro, that's so cool. I was taking so my cool. diary from Vanessa Bone back Damn. in 2021. Shout out Vanessa, so man. That's cool as fuck. Anyway, basking sharks are so cool. Their default mode of locomotion is slowly moving through the water with their mouths. A game. They have these gill rakers that line the insides of their mouths to catch krill and plankton. And like I said, they're the second largest fish alive that we know of and can get to about 33 feet long. Generally, they're seen alone. But obviously, from the video, groups are spotted from that. time to time. And I want you to yeah. take a guess on the size of the biggest group ever spotted. 10? No. 50? No. 100? No. 1,000? Close. 1,398. How many Dude, sharks? It's right here. I'm not making this shit up. 1,400 basking sharks found in a group. Nuts. But back to the reason I brought them up Damn. in the first place. The purpose of this video. So basking sharks are big, are less known than whale sharks. And I would also say don't have as much of a conspicuous silhouette as whale sharks do. Like you see a whale shark from a bird's eye view and you're like, that's a whale shark. Yeah, Basking because of sharks, the spots. if you're not really familiar with them, kind of have a very general shark silhouette. Just generic big shark. I would say the classic shark from an aerial view has just and a I knew it was a basking shark because of the snout. Snip, maybe like a tiger like shark. The, he has a white. huge and nose, bro. kind of fall into that category, but look at the snout. Look at, it's yeah, the strong, snout. Powerful, he, he's apparent, so huge. Hence the name, great nosed sea monster. Yep. So now you know. Hopefully if you come across a video I noticed right away from the, evidence, the nose. Say, right away. Boom. Done. So, to recap, all of the video evidence of the megalodon soiling the internet is either fake, i.e. photoshopped or CGI, or a case of mistaken identity and it's probably a basking shark but i know we can't stop there because there's a chance you're thinking okay fine well maybe all the evidence i've seen is fake but what if we just haven't seen it let's refer back to paragraph seven of this video where i mentioned they were partially endothermic which means they produced their own body heat producing body heat burns up a lot of calories you do that every day and yep. the only way to restock calories as an animal is to eat. The megalodon was very big, which means they had a very big appetite in order to sustain their energy requirements. And which size, means they right? must have been restricted to the areas of the ocean that have consistent, easy access to fulfilling meals, coastal ecosystems. And there's fossil evidence to support this. The megalodon, like I said, was a fucking bulldozer, not an elusive shark. The most recent fossilized teeth come from over two and a half million years ago. And we still have evidence of how much of a terror they were in the fossil record. Their teeth embedded in the bones of their prey. Dang. Dude, there is a fossilized whale found from 15 million years ago that bent its spine, and it was Ooh. most likely caused by a megalodon attack with a tooth as evidence. If we can see its destruction in the fossil record, we would absolutely be able to find proof of its existence today. Like, without that a doubt, is that is megalodon evidence. An individual that true washed that. up on the beach, wounds on prey that escaped, carcasses of their successful kills, and not just that one fucking CGI video that makes the whale look like it's made out of rubber. Like, an abundance of evidence, and we would see them all the time time okay then there's also the classic question well what if they live in the deep sea the mariana trench perhaps the deep ocean is like the sahara desert times 10 it is a hellscape generally there is nothing for thousands and thousands of miles with the occasional deep sea oasis that could be permanent maybe near hydrothermal vents or temporary mm -hmm. 
maybe a whale fall, but nothing large enough to sustain the megalodon as a species. It can't possibly be a single shark. It's biologically impossible. It's completely unsustainable for a massive, ultra predatory species that used to live at coastal waters, preyed on whales that weighed, what, like maybe 6,000 pounds yep, minimum? But let's true. just say they did evolve to live in the deep sea, where food is wildly inconsistent, the pressure is nuts, it might as well be the landscape of a different planet to adapt to. Mm -hmm. Let's just say they did. The amount of adaptations they'd have to go through to be able to survive down there, first of all, would probably be too drastic to have happened only over the course of three million years, but also would result in descendants that would be completely unrecognizable to the Megalodon as we know it. They wouldn't be the Megalodon anymore. I know there's a chance you feel like this doesn't make sense. How could such a massive, successful predator be extinct? If they were the best, why aren't they around anymore? Well, the reality is their size only works for them because of the conditions of their environment. The Bigger changes of environment. The larger size requires a massive diet, and a massive diet is a very but sensitive probably one. Probably a change of temperature in the water. Survived mass extinction didn't do so yep. because they were big or the top predators actually it has been pretty much the opposite generally there's always exceptions to that but in the general sense their ability to go long periods without food or survive off of small amounts of food has been the key to success during hard times and evidence suggests this is exactly what happened a global cooling took place at the end of the pliocene near the end of the road for the megalodon this led to thicker ice caps at the poles which led to sea levels dropping all around the world yep. which meant the loss of many coastal habitats their prey species were having a tough time which meant they were also having a tough time. And it seems as though the Megalodon might have been outcompeted by smaller counterparts. Yeah, the Great Whites. A single Great White could get by on a much smaller amount of food than a single Megalodon. And that is that. I know this might be a huge buzzkill. The Megalodon potentially still being it's alive. It's the truth, man. It's I know it's, 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 world. it's, it's fun to boring, but it's the truth. Big things haven't been discovered yet. The idea of them being alive is incredible. But the world is so much cooler than just the possibility of that. Some brittle stars can see without eyes. They have a whole different visual sensory network. Sponges in the deep sea look like alien lollipops. We're figuring out how to communicate with whales using AI. Basking sharks are huge and exist today and are not a danger to you. The current state of our ocean ecosystems is the product of half a billion years of evolution, yep. shaped true, by man. apex predators like Anomalocaris, Mosasaurus, and the Megalodon. And while it might suck that they're not still alive, they still exist in the form of how they've impacted ecosystems over such a long period of time. The reality of our planet is so much cooler than our imaginations. And that is that. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe come on my next video come on Lindsay like and that's it man and that's the tr that's the sad truth majority of the time in cases like this the boring answer is the right answer is the megalodon still alive no and that's sad and boring but it is what it is man but yeah guys thank you so much for watching the video man I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did shout out to Lindsay go subscribe to her channel and I hope you had a phenomenal weekend. But as always, don't forget how we end videos on this channel, bro. Come on, man. Keep God first as always. Drink water. Go tell somebody who love them. And if you're here, you know what to do, man. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. My name is Gonzalez. See you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.